Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel and the Nostalgic Runner, and we are back for another episode of, um, or another review of the Real Housewives of Potomac season eight, episode fifteen, and this is called Fool's Gold. Um, how I rate this episode? It was an okay episode. It wasn't great. It wasn't horrible. A lot of the elephants in the room were addressed, um, but it's still the issue where things are not really moving forward. Um, but because things were called out, at least in my opinion, what I saw here is we are seeing the common denominator. It's not making that certain person look good. Let's just say that. And, um, for that reason, I'm very, very happy that it was brought up. And I will say that someone, Kiana or Kiara, Ki I think it's Kiana, maybe it's Kiara. I'm sorry, I still do not remember, I still don't know how to say her, I still don't know exactly how to say her name, because I feel like I keep hearing it being announced as Kiana. Either way, I will say, I want her to be full-time, and I just, I think NECA should, I feel, I feel like the role should have been reversed, because for the amount of screen time we've gotten from Kiana, she's brought more to the table easily. Then NECA has this whole season. Like she just has much more of a personality. It, it just is what it is. And she actually already knows a lot of the ladies. So she actually checks more of the boxes to me than um, the NECA does. So anyway. But without further ado, let's get into the episode. So the episode does continue where we left off. Where um, they're at the beach and Wendy... Candace and Karen go, go directly to the ladies asking them what they were talking about because they were still basically ranting and raving at the fact that um, Wendy and Candace both kind of were giving looks while Giselle was talking about Grace because it was Giselle talking. It had nothing to do with Grace. It was just Giselle talking. And pretty much um, when this happened, when they confronted them, Robin tries to drop it, but Wendy's not having it. She's like, no, no, no. What were you guys talking about? And then Wendy pretty much explains that's what it is. It wasn't about Giselle's child. It's about Giselle as a whole. But And then Wendy also states, also, last time, you know, Grace was mentioned two years ago, Giselle weaponized Grace against her for more of a reason to not like her. So basically, she's, she's on tippy toes whenever Grace is mentioned for that reason, which um, the producers share that beam footage of why and where that came from. And yeah, very valid. Um, and then basically Candace says the same thing because then Ashley tries to like clarify with Candace. It's like, no, that's what it is. It's Giselle has nothing to do with her children. Don't do that. This is not what we're doing here. You're not going to say it's about the kids, about the kids, about the kids. We're not changing narratives here. It's about Giselle. We don't like it. Like, I don't see it for her. So anything she says, I don't care. And valid. <laughs> so they pretty much move on. And um, Robin um, states that she's planning to celebrate Ashley's birthday with the Havana Nights party. Uh, because we find out that Ashley was actually going to throw herself a Havana Nights birthday party in Potomac while they were still in Potomac. But due to the Canadian fires that happened last year, the air quality was horrible. So it didn't happen because, of course, it was going to be an outdoor party. And so they're now just going to be doing the Havana party in the DR, even though Havana is Cuba. But I guess Latin American culture. So it is what it is. Different Latin American, different Latin American country, but we get the gist. And so... Um, they leave the beach and get and leave to get ready for the Havana Nights party for Ashley. And all the ladies, for the most part, look good. Giselle is, she, ha I will say this, Giselle's dress was cute. She did look like a go-go dancer, though. She did not look like she was going to Havana Nights party. And she was walking ridiculously. And let me just say this. Um, for how pretty of a woman that Giselle is, the way she carries herself just makes her just seem stank. Even when she was trying to do this weird walking, I don't know. She just gives cornball. And I don't know if it's because I don't like Giselle, I feel that way, or just in general. 
I think it's a, just a general thing. Um, but anyway, so all the ladies do look good for the most part. Ashley is literally dressed like she's on her way to the carnival, <laughs> which is kind of like, girl. And um, with her little booty cheeks just out and everything, like she literally looks like she's like on her way to the carnival. And Candace shades her in a confessional for basically looking like a hooker because, I mean, she's very much underdressed, but that's on brand for Ashley. She's almost always underdressed. Um, anyway, so then Karen, as everyone sits down and they're having dinner, Karen addresses that with the conflict that happened at the beach today, it will squash super quickly. Is there hope for Candace and Robin to kind of do the same thing, get to a better place? So can't, so Karen is not letting up on trying to resolve issues. And we know that about her. It's the Taurus in her. She can't help it. She wants to resolve things. Anyway. So. But instead of this happening. Robin's being dramatic about it. And is not owning up to her part. And why they're not doing okay. But honestly. As much as I'm a Candace fan. Candace is also not owning up to her part. Um, really. If we want to break it down. Robin started all this. With when it comes to the divide of Candace and her, like it's like we keep forgetting, and the producers won't even like show this, but I feel like everyone keeps forgetting that in Miami last season, before things went way left, Robin tried to embarrass Candace and put a speakerphone, um, trying to expose Candace for talking crap about the ladies. And she wasn't talking crap about all the ladies. She was literally only talking crap about Giselle and Ashley. And it's really things that she would say to their face. <laughs> so, um, and we keep, for, it's like that was never, it's like no one mentions that. And Candace, I just wish you would mention that too, because that was kind of really where, as a viewer, that's where it started. But, you know, from there, it did look like, I guess also, too, Ashley didn't ask, like, Candace, like, hey, so do you change your mind now about how, what you said about Robin possibly being, you know, pretending to be on your side to avoid talking about her issues? And Candace can't really answer the question because she's like, I don't really know. And... I kind of respect the answer because as a viewer, I don't really know the answer to it. But I would say this, if Candace truly thought that Robin was her friend, that is kind of a blocker of a friendship right there. If you really don't believe, you don't know for sure if she did that or not. And that's where well, Robin's kind of right in this. And it's kind of less confusing for Robin because Robin is like, you said all these things about me online, but you never apologized for it, which she never did. So, I mean, I hate to say this. I don't really want to be on Robin's side, but I mean, let's call a thing a thing. And then also, too, you also, she's, you know, according to Candace, she's accusing her of doing something that Robin's like, well, if you feel like I would do something like that, then we really can't be friends. And so that's where they're at. Nothing really changed there. Anyway. So they go back to celebrating Ashley. Ashley reflects in her confessionals about the eighth birthday she is celebrating with the ladies. And we see footages of the past seasons of her celebrating her birthdays with the ladies. And then an hour later, Ashley jumps in the pool in her like caramel outfit. And then Mia pretends she's jumping in the pool, but then doesn't. But then Wendy goes behind and pushes her in the pool. And it's cute and fun. It's a cute, fun scene. And then they're in the pool, just like playing, like kind of play, playing around in the pool. And that's where things kind of end. So next we have a Housewives montage. We see um, Wendy talking to Eddie via FaceTime. Robin's talking to her mom via FaceTime, but also sharing the, like the itinerary for the day with her mom. Uh, Ashley is exercising. Neneka is talking to Ike via FaceTime. And um, then we see Karen and Giselle go to talk to each other by like the pool and hot tub area in their yard. And Giselle wants to address why she didn't go to Surrey County. And I'm like, 
Giselle, no one cares. We've moved past that. And I think this is a problem with you on this show. You don't move past anything. As a viewer, that Siri County episode was four episodes ago. I don't remember anything about it. I don't care anymore. Next. And it's just odd to me that you have someone on the show who's just that disconnected and so unaware that like, why are we still talking about something that happened like four episodes ago? And we already knew why you didn't go. It doesn't need to be explained. It's like, I feel like Robin, I feel like not Robin. I feel like Giselle thinks we're dumb. And it's like, no, <laughs> you're dumb for thinking that we are dumb. <laughs> I just, it, it's, it's really frustrating as a viewer to watch her. But anyway, so we really find out that Giselle is mad. And she, and you, and you saw during the um, conflict at the beginning of the episode when Karen, you know, had Candace and Wendy's back on them making faces, like saying, well, they, that's what they, they do that all the time. Um, even though I don't know about all that, but <laughs> basically Giselle is, is annoyed and sick of Karen riding the fence and being the fence. And she's trying to accuse Karen of acting a certain way when it's just her and Wendy and like Candace are not there versus when Wendy and Candace is around. And I'm sorry. To me, it just reads Giselle wants Karen to ice him out and she's just not going to do that. And so, and you know, Karen in the confessional makes all the sense in the world. She's like, she doesn't have a problem with me. She has a problem with Candace. She has a problem with Wendy. She needs to talk to them if she has a problem with them and address it. I'm not going to be the person. You're not going to talk through me. I'm not going to do it for you. You need to do it that way. And so basically, um, Karen does agree. Like, okay, if you feel like I act differently towards them versus around you and just like without them, okay, I'll make sure I match my energy at all times. The energy's still the same. And... Giselle in her confessional compares um, Karen and her friendship as Monica and Brandy. Like, they like each other, but they also don't like each other sometimes. <laughs> and in Giselle's delusional mind, she thinks she is Brandy. And probably for, according to, like, I guess, Bravo, because technically she's a face of the show. Yeah. But man, those re the way those reunion seatings came out recently, and Giselle is not the first chair anymore. I think she's starting to learn she's actually Monica and not Brandy in this equation. But Karen is Brandy because Karen still is first chair on the other side. Anyway, so by the way, I should have mentioned when they were doing the. Housewives montage was day three. So the last day of the trip. They're only there for three days. That's annoying. <laughs> that's annoying and kind of disappointing. I wouldn't want to just be on a trip for like three or four days and that's it. But anyway, I guess. So it's 90, it's like 90 degrees outside. And of course, since it's like the Caribbean, it's like 90 feels horrible. And they do, they end up going to this castle, like kind of a compound where, the, yes, there's a castle there, but it's like a whole bunch of, it's a large ground of a whole bunch of things there. So there's a restaurant there, there's a church there. And honestly, I will say this, it looked beautiful where they're at, but I did not love or like the fact that we really didn't get to see the church or the castle really, for real, for real. It. It's like for them being somewhere that is another country, I would have wanted to see more that was about the other country. And so I, that is my main complaint about this trip. To me, they didn't do really enough stuff that was about them being there. And I wish they would have had more things where they would do that wouldn't be stuff they could do just in the United States. You know what I mean? So that was kind of my only disappointment with this trip. But anyway. So they're having lunch. They sit down and have lunch. And as they sit down and have lunch, a cat pees on Mia. 
Um, but then also, Karen is talking about her health again, because you know she's triple 20. And she talks about, and then um, as she's talking about her health, Mia asks about her trainer, because, you know, she mentioned she has this male trainer now. And we find out that this trainer is Vernon Davis. And for those who don't know who that is, Vernon Davis is a former NFL tight end. And he mainly, I would say most of his career was with the 49ers, but he did in his career with the Washington um, football team. I don't think they weren't called that back then, of course. But yeah, so Vernon Davis is her trainer. I don't think or know that Vernon Davis does personal training. But apparently, this is going to be Karen's trainer. So, Robin and Mia both shade Karen in the confessional. Because they're just like... So, Mia's like, "Mm mm-hmm. You're training something, all right. We know that... She's like, we know that... um, we know that your husband ain't giving it to you, so I guess you're training something else. That's what Mia pretty much alluded to. And Rob is just like, girl, how are you going to have a trainer that isn't a personal trainer? <laughs> and no worries, that does come up later on. But what we were not prepared for is that Ashley knows Vernon Davis as well. And... When his name came up, she lit up. I've never seen this side of Ashley before, like really lit up. And she kind of escaped and went to the restroom and then she came back. And it turns out they flirt, they have this flirty relationship, I guess, or ship. Like they're not really dating or seeing each other, but like they kind of have this flirty banter. And to me, it just seems like Ashley has kind of a little bit of a crush on him. And he's an attractive dude. He really is. He's a very attractive dude. So I totally get it. Um, But anyway, so Karen then discuss what she thinks, which they switch focus and Karen discuss what she and Giselle discussed that morning with the rest of the ladies um, about how she seems to switch up when um, Candace and Wendy are around versus when they're not around. And of course, Candace and Wendy, they disagree. I do, too. Um, both of them pretty much say no. Karen's just a type, don't come for her unless she sends for you. And they don't, it seems to only happen when they're around. That doesn't happen if, like, they're not around as much. So that's one of the things. Um, and Mia agrees with Giselle and says, no, you act different when they're around. And Robin's indifferent. She's like, I don't have that great relationship with Karen, so I wouldn't know the difference, and my expectations is low. And, of course, um, Karen cannot help herself but to jab right back. She's like, mm, Simpson, it's the same for me with you, too. <laughs> but then Kiana makes the most sense out of all this and addresses the whole thing. She's like, as someone who just freshly came to the group, I noticed that there is just this weird, tense energy between you, Candace, and Giselle, what is that about? And Candace immediately shuts it down like, we don't like each other. That's it. That's all. Move on. <laughs> Pretty much. And she's like, oh, okay. Well, that was easy to figure that out. And then she's like, well, what about you and um, Wendy? Kiana asks. And, Ke- and Wendy's trying to like give grace still. Wendy is still trying to keep hope alive that they could be friends at some point in time because this beef is a one-sided beef. Giselle does not like Wendy for whatever reason, but if Giselle was to switch and be and like, like Wendy again, they would have no issues. Um, and Kiana's like, okay, wow. Well, I guess that's what it is here. And, um, yeah, the common denominator that we've, been talking about this whole entire season is Giselle but it's not in a good way where you're a villain it's where this show was becoming unwatchable because of her so they wrap up the lunch and ladies get ready to go to the activities so Karen Mia 
windy and Candace are going to play tennis and now it's 94 degrees outside and I would not want to be doing that either. That sounds horrible. While the rest of the ladies are doing the ski shooting thing, which is where they throw like the plate or whatever and then you shoot it with like a shot with a shotgun type thing. Um, so they're at like a shooting range. Um, out in, it's still outside, but at least the ladies who are doing that have shade. It still isn't. It still seems miserable because it's just such a hot time to be out and about, but it is what it is. So, um, while the rest of, while, um, Neneka is, it's Neneka's turn to do this, um, the ski shooting, um, both Robin and Giselle are asking Kiana about how she likes being in the trip and also did Wendy talk to her about them and Kiana's like no she didn't do that she just you know that's not what it is and to me it just it was it's so weird to me that for Giselle not liking Wendy don't want anything to do with her you certainly care about if Wendy talked about you or not it's just odd to me but anyway so then while they're talking about Wendy and kind of, you know, talking about their experiences with that, um, Neneka show up and Neneka, and then Kiana's asking Neneka about what is up with you and Wendy and why is it that you decided to bring our culture into this? She can't, she literally called a thing a thing. And Neneka, you did not make yourself look good here. Kiana kind of ate you up here and kind of show that you really are the problem. It's you. It's not Wendy. I mean, I feel like all the other episodes leading up to this, it was confusing. There was no way of knowing who was the problem for real, for real. Even though to me, for me, it was always obvious. I thought it was the neck of the whole time. But here it made it very crystal clear because Kiana was coming in this situation trying to be neutral and you were just in attack, 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 attack mode. And you weren't making any sense. And trying to gaslight her, but she was not having it. She actually, Kiana was actually be able to art she was able to articulate herself and kind of show you she's not the one or the two a little bit better than Wendy can. And she kind of ate you up. But anyway, so that's kind of where um, they stop talking about it here because they do end up switching focus. Um, but this is one of those dual scenes. So we'll go back to the tennis court here and then next. So on the tennis court, Mia shares another story regarding her feet. She says, so the lady's like, wait, do you have only fans for your feet? She's like, no, but back when I was, back when I was an exact dancer, I would like sometimes men would play, um, pay extra money for me just to put my feet on like their, around their chest and stuff like that. <laughs> Wendy's like, I'm about to call you Socrates because you always got yourself a story. And I, that's it. Wendy, that was funny. <laughs> that was funny because Mia, Mia be on some, be on some BS, but we love her for it. I mean, she's the kind of mess we kind of like. I ain't, I ain't gonna hold you. Minus the Miami trip. Don't ever do anything similar to the Miami trip ever again. But outside of that, I, Mia's starting to win me over. I mean, if, just in case y'all didn't know, Mia and her messiness, I'm starting to really, really like her. Um, anyway, so back with Giselle, Ashley, Kiana, Robin, and Naneka, um, Giselle asks Ashley how she feels about Vernon, and Ashley is blushing yet again. And... Um, so while this is happening, Mia starts switches focuses and starts talking about Ashley's divorce. And Mia is being super messy. And she calls, she basically calls Ashley a gold digger and is like, I feel like she just stuck around because she found the prenup was not going to give her what she thought she was going to give. So she's sticking around because of that. And we all figure that's what it was. I mean, I mean, come on now. We're, let's be real. <laughs> I mean, that seems like the most obvious thing of what's happening here. But um, anyway, so while this is happening, Ashley and the others are still talking about Vernon. And someone asked if like he is her type. 
And she states that she doesn't have a type, kind of being around the bush. But then Giselle states, well, he's black, so no. <laughs> I was like, because let's call a thing a thing. Historically, we have never seen Ashley with a black man. It seems like her type is usually of the Caucasus Mountains. But I don't know. I feel like part of it is we really don't know Ashley for real life because I, I feel like out of all the ladies, well, a lot of the ladies on the show, but she's one of them. She doesn't really share how she doesn't really share her real life for real for real. So maybe she would, because honestly, for her, she's blushing a lot when it comes to Vernon. So maybe he's the exception, because everyone has an exception. I feel like a lot of people have exception to their normal standards of who they date. Just saying. Anyway. So while this is happening, the other ladies at back at the tennis court continue to talk about Ashley's divorce. And Candace actually does come to Ashley's defense and states like, you know, I feel like a lot of what Ashley's doing is tied to her lack of a father figure. And she really sees, you know, Michael as a father figure type. Like she's actually giving her grace and is not trashing her at all in this in this moment. And partially, I think it's strategic because she knows she's talking to Mia. She doesn't want to be the one who's causing any mess. And Honestly, I think Candace is sick of fighting with Ashley. I think she's trying to make a very strong effort of like, look, me and Ashley can coexist. I don't want to fight with her this season. And for the most part, other than like the one episode, they kind of have stuck with that for the most part. And keep in mind, Candace does have that lawsuit going on with Michael while this is still happening. So she can't, she can't go in even if she wanted to right now. You know, because she's fighting a lawsuit. So let's keep that in mind. I think when I was watching it, I forgot about it, but I didn't even write it down. But now I'm just like, oh, yeah, she's literally still fighting Michael right now. So she has so she's minding her P's and Q's. Let's just put it that way. And. But then. Um, Wendy states that she's a product of divorce and that's difficult, you know. And so maybe she's trying to protect her children when it comes to that. And then Karen says, you know, divorces are crippling because her and Ray, that's her second marriage. Her first marriage, she said it ended. And she's like, when I, when I, I was just so happy when I got my divorce that my mom was with me at the time, I just broke down and started crying. She's like, and she states in her confessional, she describes a divorce as in like, it's like getting amputated wide awake. No anesthesia. And I'm like, whew. So, um, yeah. So basically, they sum up saying divorce is hard. And um, so then after that, all the ladies, so they all wrap it up. They, the, the events get wrapped up and they end up going, they all end up going back to the villa. And while they're back in the villa getting ready for dinner, Ashley face is on FaceTime with her kids. And she's finally able to see her kids. But she does mention to Michael, like, hey, I am filming. He turns that camera off so quick. It was ridiculous. And she was like, I am not going to show you. I just want to see my kids. And you literally see Ashley's begging her, like, beg, trying to beg Michael, like, look, I haven't seen my kids this whole entire trip. Can I please see my kids? And he was not having it. And we find out from her that <laughs> Michael, this diabolical dude, is threatening to sue Ashley if she's ever on film ever again for this show. So you think him suing Candace is low. He's going to sue Ashley. But... I'm wondering, though, based off the outcome, because, you know, Candace won that lawsuit, side note, because they signed a contract, if you're going to be on the show, that you can't sue one another. So I'm wondering, wondering if Ashley has a workaround now when it comes to some of this. I don't know, because Ashley, even though she likes to play dumb, I feel like she can't, she, she usually has, it seems like she's someone who have a plan. But anyway. 
But that's where kind of it. That's where it ends before they go to dinner. And I was kind of I wasn't expecting that tidbit, but this is we, we saw that. So it is what it is. Okay. So then the final scene here, the ladies are basically getting ready for the last dinner on the trip. Um, they do get to dinner, they arrive, and wherever dinner that they're at, they're at a beautiful place, and it's someone's wedding, so, um, Ashley says congratulations, and then she mutters on her breath, don't do it. <laughs> so I am starting to believe, and I don't know if I'm gullible, but I'm, I am starting to believe Ashley actually really does want to divorce this man, she just kind of can't. Right now. <laughs> I think she's trying to find a way to get out of it, but I don't know if she's going to find it. But anyway, so Naneka asked about tennis um, and how they, how, how, how was it? Candace shares that it was fun, but that she just, she goes in right away. She's like, but we were talking about Ashley's divorce during that time. And then Wendy comes in and she's like, yeah, um, yeah, Mia brought it up. And she thinks that um, the reason why you're not getting divorced is because you're being a gold digger and you're not going to get what you're looking for if you get the divorce. And Mia owns it. She's like, yep, I said that. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> Ashley tries to flip it back on me. And she's like, well, did you marry Gordon because, because of his money? And she's like, I may, I might have. But he's broke. And so someone, and then Kiana chimes, is like, but he's broke now. And the other ladies, because they haven't smartened Kiana up to know that Mia be lying. So... <laughs> They're like, no, that ain't really true. And so, they're, but they're just allowing them to go back and forth a little bit. But then Giselle stops it because I wanted to see more of a back and forth between Ashley and Mia. But no, 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 Giselle had to kill the fun. And she changes it to talk about Vernon. Um, but to shade Karen, it wasn't about Ashley. It was to shade Karen because... Robin is like, so why do you have Vernon as your trainer if he's not a personal trainer? And Karen's like, why do you care? Are you jealous that you can't do that? And Karen also wasn't making sense because it, that actually is a true valid question. Why do you have someone who's not a trainer as your trainer? But man, she was deflecting she was deflecting and robin was getting annoyed but then <laughs> karen just kept stating like but i'm trying to work on my inner thighs and out of nowhere the lady start making a song of it because she kept mentioning her inner thighs like so working on inner thighs working on inner thighs and all the ladies were, like dancing working on inner thighs <laughs> working on inner thighs and so they forget the argument they cheer, they do a toast and they cheers. And that is the end of the trip. So it actually ended up being a decent episode. I, I, I still hate that they're not getting along for real, but I love that they were able to put their differences aside. And I wish they could just do this in general, but you know, it is what it is. But that does conclude the episode. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon and Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.